Howdy! Perilous Storytelling Subliminal Space is set in the Dark Matter universe by Mage Hand Press. Dark Matter is an expansion for 5th edition D&D that lets you play your very own sci-fi campaign without learning a new system. You still have 5th edition classes and spells, but you also have blasters, new races, ships, and more. You can even mix and match Dark Matter with any other supplement, and you can play any type of sci-fi subgenre from 40k to cyberpunk and beyond. Beyond. If you like the world of subliminal space, go pick up Dark Matter at MageHandPress.com and use code PSD for 10% off your order. Once again, that's Dark Matter only at MageHandPress.com. Welcome back to Perilous Storytelling. Welcome to Subliminal Space. Look to the stars and what do you see? Danger and fright for you, but not me. A terrible tale of wonder and woe. Will it lurk above or will it lurk below? There will be frights and chills, blood spills and fights. Will our adventurers live or be dead in the night? Space is vast and there are so many choices. Will they survive or succumb to the voices? You find yourselves blindfolded. You can hear the thumping of a ship. You're being transported somewhere, and there are other people in a room with you. I'm just gonna make my head, like, thinner and just <laughs> get the blindfold off my face. <laughs> I can just use flexible form. You try to, but it restricts, it restricts as you put, as you try oh. to push it off, it restricts. It's a cyber mesh blindfold. <gasps> it's a, sci it, it compresses to, and molds to my body? Yes. And my face? Yes. Suddenly the rumbling stops and you hear a and feel the vibration of a door opening. The blindfolds all come off. There is a woman standing there with a briefcase in front of you. Uh, robotic arms have come down from this now futuristic, white polished plastic cargo bay that you were sitting in. And the robot arms have taken the blindfolds off of you and a woman with a briefcase stands in front of you. Let me get a little roll call going. My name is Jane Silverhand. Let's uh, get your papers in order here. And she pulls some papers out of her briefcase, double checks them. She's like a tall elven woman uh, with very pointy ears and brown hair. She has a silver briefcase and a very uh, uh, cool, uh, hyper futuristic black suit with a nice bright green shirt and a black tie. Just doing all my like my immortal character description here for the audio listeners at home. She pulls a couple of papers out and she looks at all of you in the cargo bay, still tied up. At the bottom, the blindfolds wasn't the only binding that you had on you. All of you are like tied up, like hog tied to like chairs in the middle of this cargo bay. They're very comfy chairs, though. Like, I'm not going to lie. All right. Uh, let's start off here looking at the applications. Uh, Skithari, bug, four legs, rail thin, malevolent aura, cool hat. Uh, name is Sketch. How? How no name? Elf can't read now, how, how, how elf read mind in this moon cycle? Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Well, that's, oh uh, that's a check on you. Uh, Mandy's playing Malkavian. Okay. Uh, another Skithari uh, warrior. Uh, looks like four legs. Yep, 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 yep. Looking at this. Uh, green. Uh, very, very loud. Uh, Kizak. Um, you could just say yes or here or present. It's fine. Uh present uh blue amoeboid oh application here says scientist of some sort uh says g yes could you please untie me okay all right present it's feeling a bit stuffy here yeah uh listen we'll get you out of here in a minute just uh making sure that everybody's here okay next application here uh just says fish very damp wet application i hope that didn't ruin any of my other papers uh it says that they're a nautilid, but they're not hidden. Uh, I'm assuming that's you, fellow in the, uh, well, I, I don't know if you're a fish or a man or a, a fish in a 
glass tank wearing a man's body, but it does say here you're a nautilid, and since I don't have a lot of experience, uh, you must be fish then. Hi, I'm right here. Pretty obvious from that one. All right. Uh, all right, next one uh, looks to be a robot of some sort, a blue blue eyes, a gray robot, kind of a cowboy western vibe going on there, looking like a bounty hunter a little bit. You're, uh, you're Colt, right? This, uh, this all really necessary the second time around? This isn't exactly my first job for you guys. Sketch had dreamed this. Sketch had seen this before. It's just standard operating procedure to get you to the space station here. Uh, just don't want anybody to know the location of it except for those working for us, all right? It's just oh. a lot better this oh. way. Oh, she tries to get your attention and starts jumping on the, like, on the chair. I have a question, please. Remove bindings, please, she says very loudly, and the robot arms come down, and they just untie you like Christmas presents. And they flip you up and down for a little bit, and then set you back down completely untied. Mm. I don't have a question anymore. Thank you. All right, well, you're binding. Oh, wait a minute. Let me check my papers here. Uh Oh, there was one more. Uh Oh, in the back there, I see you. Dumb. <clears throat> you look behind you, and there's a giant hulking minotaur covered in hyper like cyber armor he's got like a warhammer made of crystal fractals next to him and he's wearing these like full like shifting steel plates he has two really cool cyborg eyes dom is here ah beautiful minerals on the axe thank you i am dom i am she i have traveled many moons to be able to fight for the firm i am ready to give myself to you Oh, I have no idea why I'm here. Mm, well, you see, you were either recruited for a job or you accepted a job. Uh, recruitment can be a little bit rough for new applicants. However, I did not recruit. Well, recruiting is just a, a, a nice way of saying it is you may have been. Uh, some people say abduction. I don't like that word. I don't think it's kind. You've been recruited for this job because your skill set may apply to what we need here at the firm. You're a slave now, kid. Minotaur mentioned moons. Minotaur knows about moon cycles, knows about elf, knows about brain reading. Sketch consider how Minotaur know. It's our secret. This life form is very knowledgeable of thought. <laughs> if you'll all follow me to the uh, recruitment hall, there will be food and refreshment while we get you through the interview process. <gasps> Snacks. I do like the sound of that. No, thank you. I would like to leave. I would like to go back to uh, looking at cool rocks and interesting minerals. If we take you through the interview process, which we will, then you can choose to leave afterwards. You can either accept ah. or deny the job from uh, Zhaj. Zhaj? Zhaj. You'll speak with Zhaj in a moment here. He takes care of all the interview stuff. I see. Uh, I just am, am kind of the, I, I don't want to say base secretary because that's rude, but think of me as like a compliance officer. That's my official title. Compliance make food for tyranny. Thank you for your service. I understood most of that. <laughs> All right, she leads all of you through uh, into the main bay area. There are a couple of ships there. There are these kind of boring, from the outside you can see the ship is kind of this boring, boxy, it kind of looks like a big white box with two lines on the side of it, uh, and then two propulsion engines just slapped to the back of it. Uh, everything in the bay is just very clear, plasticine white, sterile. Uh, there are a couple of people working also in suits, uh, moving boxes, it looks like big plastic like boxes into another loading bay onto another ship. And she leads you into a hallway, then another hallway, through another hallway, through another hallway, uh, finally to a door, which is where you see now on the map. It is a big white break room. It looks like your standard office break room, except gigantic. There are fridges and counters and microwaves, and there's a bunch of chairs that are, look kind of uncomfortable, a bunch of tables that look like they've been cleaned, but not very well. There are a ton of other adventurers that are also milling about. They are all drinking. It looks like kind of fruit punch in a clear plastic glass. And there are some, uh, as you enter, you can smell the, there, there, there's just a big box full of single serve brownies and a sign above it that says, please take only one. Is there a water cooler in this room? <laughs> there is a water. There are like seven water coolers in this room. I will immediately walk over to the water cooler and start tapping it with my finger to try and find out if it's water that I would like. I'm immediately <laughs> going to devour all of the brownies. <laughs> Hezok will also be doing the same. I'm going to look at office plants. They're all plastic. I don't like this place. Is there a bar? 
in the area, the waiting area, like anywhere the drink. There are a few punch bowls on some of the counters, and there are adventurers milling about them around them. There are all types of adventurers, by the way. There are Vect, there are Rothian, there are adventurers, mercenaries. Uh, there's of course Jam, who is the big cyborg esque Minotaur that came with y'all, and he is he is slurping punch directly out of one of the many punch bowls. When he picks up the punch bowl, it actually gets replaced with another punch bowl right on the spot, like a like an I dream of genie bit. <laughs> this fucking nuts. How are these brownies faring? Uh, as you are like plowing down on the brownies, uh, a little robot pops out of the wall on a shelf near the brownies, and he just starts trying to shoo you away and slap you. He's like, Ugh. Sketch smell no pheromones on you. Not living thing. No touch. What the hell? Uh, I need uh, Kizak and Sketch to make a reflex save. Dex save? Uh, yeah, Dex. I forget. 5e. 30, 20. <laughs> Roll a 5. <laughs> so the little robot, it, it immediately powers up. And we're <laughs> Sketch, one of your arms just falls off. It has been lasered clean through. Oh my uh, god. Kizak, you are fine. You missed it completely. Ooh. Ah. You take 5 damage. Oh, Jesus. Ah. You ruined Sketch's week. Uh, take it all day to regrow that limb. Only one per customer. You're not real. Not have soul. Not real. Not talk to Sketch this way. How dare it speak? It cannot speak. It goes back into the wall and then it pops back out and it moves its little robot fingers to its single robot eye. It's like a square shaped little robot with like a camera in the middle and with little like, uh, I want to say like little bug arms and it takes its, its two fingers that it has, points them towards its camera eye and then points them back at you. And then it goes back into its hole. No smell, no soul. No smell, no soul. No smell. I, I want to walk up to the little hole the robot came out of and like tap on it to like get its attention. You tap on it, um, but nothing happens. Nothing. Okay. However, Colt, uh, someone taps you on the shoulder. Huh? Hello? I didn't know they were hiring bastards. This is uh, Jimothy Etherbaum, somebody that you've worked with before in the past. He is a half orc adventurer. Wears these green pilot goggles and has two uh, simple laser repeaters uh, just stashed at his waist. I'm surprised you've made it through more missions. Oh, Jesus, I forgot. Jimothy Etherbaum is a Patreon name from Jeffrey Jangles. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey Jangles. Well, you know, I'm a little hard up during the times, but this uh, is still not as bad as our last job. Do you remember the, uh, remember the crabs? There are so many. So many crustaceans. Well... Good to see you here. They're uh, taking people in for interviews. Just uh, wanted to say, hey, since I saw you milling about, I'm going to be drinking this uh, bottle of, what is this? And he pulls a bottle out from his shirt, and it's a it's like a purple crystal bottle of alcohol that just says sad juice on it. Guess I'm drinking this. Oh my God. Then he walks away with the sad juice. Suddenly, uh, a very loud whining alarm. <coughs> Jane comes out of uh, the door at the end of the uh, recruitment hall. And she says, all right, well, uh, some of you have been interviewed, but uh, we're going to start some interviews now as well. Uh, I think most of you have already been done. Uh, so we are going to get with the newcomers now. Um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Are the loud noises, are, are they necessary? Here's the thing. We've tried more pleasant tones in the past. However... Those don't really garner attention, and I think you just volunteered to be a part of this first interview here. So uh, why don't you come on in? I don't think I ever volunteer for anything. <laughs> why don't you head on in, uh, Ji, and uh, we'll get this started. You'll speak with Josh. All right, well, Josh seems like a pleasant man. I love his rocks. Uh, Jane leads you through the door and into a large uh, futuristic room. It, it kind of looks like a Star Trek uh, teleporter room, but much bigger. It's got a central podium in the middle uh, with many uh, st structures that are holding it up. And in the center of the room is a giant head encased in crystal. This is a silver head with like blonde hair and green eyes. And it is huge. It's massive. It's It's got to be at least 10 times larger than you. This takes up a bunch of prime real estate on this space station, you feel. This is Josh. Uh... Josh, do you want to say hello? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hello! Hey, hi, hey there, hi. I'm the uh, cybernetically augmented crystal administrator, but please call me Josh. Josh is God here? I thought Josh was the 
the giant orc thing. No, the giant minotaur was Jom. That's Jom. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Jom. That's this Jom. is Josh. This is Josh. Now, it looks like uh, we pulled Alia in here. I was going to do a one on one sit down, but since I've got, got you all here, uh, welcome to the firm. We are a subdivision of Grax's Guys for Cheats. They're a bit of a mercenary organization, but uh, I'm going to pull you all into, well, I like to call them pockets, but. They're, they're a lot of fun. I'm going to pull each and every one of you into a little pocket here, and we'll speak one-on-one -on -one and figure out if you're worthy of taking a job with us. I see one of you already has some history with us before, uh, but we'll still run through the new hiring process and see, see, see if you like to work, work here. That sounds pleasant can, enough. Can I uh, use my thermal site to determine if he's living? You can. Is he living? So, <laughs> if, if you're not familiar with the technology as, as, as Kizok and Sketch would be, uh, you are familiar with mm -hmm. uh, crystal technology. Uh, sometimes crystals okay. can be used to preserve or house an AI, and it's kind of this fusion of magic and technology, uh, whereas both on their own kind of fall flat. Put together, Zhaj is one of those crystal AIs. He's a very large one. Right. Right, but he didn't used to be human or some shit like that. He's just like a he's a he's like a magic AI. As far as you know, he is a magic AI. He is a he's a he's a I, I wrote down here he is a cybernetically augmented crystal administrator or Kaka for short. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a if fucking it. child. <laughs> I can I roll nature to see what kind of crystal it, it would is? be arcane Just very because it would be magic. In crystal. It's a magic crystal. Oh, I still roll it. I roll it. Out of twenty one, you can tell that this is a top of the line magic crystal. Um, generally, there are magic crystals all throughout the verse. Uh, there are some crystal mining rigs out there, uh, but this one seems to be a, a very special sort of crystal. It's not just, uh magically imbued you can tell that somehow the crystal is also technologically imbued it's like doubled up oh it's doubled up on fucking magic and science it's full of so many magicules so many magic molecules can i roll insight to see if it would be a good support beam for a tunnel in my hive yes absolutely <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Roll a 19 to determine this. Now, while your race is not technologically advanced, Skathari are still familiar with magic. You understand with your insight that this looks exactly like the crystal that one of your uh, hive rivals had supporting their home. I begin to plot on how I could possibly steal this rock. <laughs> it has not fully sunk in that it's talking. I'm more just looking at the rock right now. Okay. So we're gonna do the interviews now. Uh, let's start with any 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 giant holographic finger comes out and starts like pointing at all of you. It's like wiggling. It's like let's start. Ah. With... It's like a game show. <laughs> we're gonna start with you. And he points at Kizok. Come on down. And a his hand opens up, and there's a, a like a whirlpool of magic inside his hand, and he sucks Kizok in. Aww. Uh, the rest of you just see Kizok get sucked in. Let's roll over to the interview. Uh, Kizok, you are in a cave, a dark cave. Uh, there is a, another Skithari apart from you when you awaken, and there is a fire pit in the middle. This Skithari is scratching onto the ground with a stick, and then it looks up, and it's got Josh's fucking whole face instead of a Skithari face. <laughs> hey! Um, are you... Okay. <laughs> I'm fine. I just thought I'd bring you to somewhere a little more co comfortable for you. Uh, uh, let's get this process started. Tell me your name. Well, um, my name is, uh, Kizok. Good! Ugh. Now, tell me, how did you hear about the firm? Well, I, um, was left on a silver room, right? Um, and I was asking for work, and somebody pointed me into a smaller room and then I just kind of kept following where people were pointing. Hmm. Now tell us why did you decide to choose the firm for your work? Was there more than one choice? Good, good. I'll write that down. And on a scale of 1 to 10, how desperate are you for work? Um, on a scale of from what to huh? Good, good. I'll write that down. And let me ask you this. What do you bring to the table? Oh, this. And he's gonna pull out his, um, his just normal battle axe that is all 
uh, like chipped away at with a lot of use. Good, good combat. And a personalized question, as it is important for each interview. Have you ever been impaled? And if yes, on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the experience? Yes, and it's not very fun. Immediately, you get slurped back out. In the second, it was only a second for everybody else, but for you, it was it was that interview time. You get slurped back out, and you're covered in a thick, oily sheen. All right, next. Uh, that looks good for your skin. Josh starts, uh, he has another holographic hand, and now he's rubbing them both together in front of you. All right, and let's see. Uh, I touched the goop on Kizok. <laughs> As you touch it, it's just, it's kind of like um, hand sanitizer. It's just Does it smell evaporating. like Purell? It smells Purell? like uh, like Sakura cherry blossoms. Hmm. I, uh, Very pleasant <laughs> smell. Like a free shower. Kizok is going to get a little bit on his hand and put it in his mouth. Oh. Hmm. Did it taste good? Have you ever licked a Nintendo Switch cartridge? Yes. It tastes oh, like so bitter. Bad. It's so got bitter. It's bitter. It's immediately like... <laughs> That's the sound I would make if I just did that. He's going to make a really disgusted face and, and, and not take his finger out of his mouth. He likes it. Right, you. And he points it, uh, he points at G and he ah! sucks you up. You wake up and you are in a mall. You're comfortable. It looks like your office, actually. Looks like where you do ah. all your work at. Pretty nice. And there is another amoeboid opposite from you. But once again, horrifyingly, it's like Zhaj's crystal is implanted directly and it's where its head would be. Oh, Jesus. I thought you'd be- Space Jesus. Thought you'd be a little more comfortable in here. So let me get through this interview process and boop, 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 here are my questions. Tell us uh, your name or tell me your name here. I'm Xi. Mm -hmm. And how did you hear about us, Xi? I've never heard about you. I have no idea where I am. And I don't know why you think I'm volunteering. I was actually, uh, last thing I remember, uh, I was just scouting for rocks and minerals. Okay, standard recruitment. All right, and tell us why you decided to work with the firm. I, I never said I decided anything. You told me I could leave. And on a scale of one to 10, how desperate are you for work? Please let me go. And if we were to choose you for a job, which you would be handsomely rewarded for, what would you bring to the table? She gets up and walks to the towards the door to leave. Painful shock. <laughs> what now? Now, now, now. You can't exit the interview process until I let you leave. What would you bring to the table? Honest answer here. <sighs> what? Just let me out! Okay, okay. No response on that one. All right, last one. A little personalized question for you is he pulls out a little vial of green liquid. Would you consume this green liquid even if you didn't know what it was? Can I roll... Can I roll something to see if I know what that is? You can, I guess. You can roll uh, probably Arcana. That's Arcana. I rolled 17 Arcana. It's hard to tell with so many magic molecules in the air, but it just... If you sensed it, or if you tried to understand it, it's just if 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 it somehow popped up in your head in a UI, it just says mysterious green liquid, and underneath that in the description tab, it would just say placeholder dev ID. I I don't think I would. <laughs> good, good. Okay, and we'll you back out, and you come back out into the main room with everybody else. Yeah, that was fast. Yours was fast. Uh, how long is this gonna take? I'm, I want to pull out a cigarette. <laughs> and light it. Uh, why don't we grab you next, Mr... What was it again? A cult? Let's grab oh. you. And you, you... You are in a Vex saloon when you awaken in the pocket, as uh, Zhaj calls it. Uh, there is a gunslinger, a lonely gunslinger, hanging out at the bar table. There is no bartender. There's nobody else in here. And outside, you can see the saloon doors are flapping in the wind. You can almost hear like a whistling and you see a tumbleweed even pass by. And then the tumbleweed outside turns around and it's got Josh's face on it. And it fucking jumps through the saloon door, implodes the gunslinger at the fucking bar's head, and then nestles itself, nestle, nestles his like tumbleweed <laughs> self onto the neck of the gunslinger. And then turns around to you. While this is happening, I was halfway through like lighting a cigarette. I like look very surprised, and then I just finish lighting the cigarette and, and take a drag. See, this is why I hate getting applicants who've already worked for us. There's just no more magic to it. But still, 
We're gonna have to run through this interview process. And the like he's like controlling the body limply like a necromorph with no arms, like the arms are noodling at the sides, and he like <laughs> shuffles up to you with like his he's like chest first and he like shuffles up to you on this dead cowboy's body with the tumbleweed Josh head on top. All right, and then the mm -hmm. arms come up and they're working normally, and he pulls out a little clipboard. Clipboard. I, uh, I lean onto the counter while, while while this happens. Now tell us your name. I think you have that on file. Okay, but just for just for uh, just for record's sake, uh, I need the interview process to go a certain way. So please tell them tell me your name. Cult. Just cult. Thank you. How did you hear about us? How did I? The same way everyone does. I was minding my own business, and then. Suddenly, I'm working for you. Standard recruitment. All right, all right. And uh, tell us why you decided to work with the firm. I mean, the pay's not bad. This is true. We This is very true. We do offer proper recompensation for work. And on a scale of one to ten, how desperate are you right now for work? Five. Good, a number answer, finally. All right. And what do you bring to the table? I think you know what I bring to the table. This is true. This is true. We'll just copy and paste your old answer. I needed the name for something else, but we can just copy and paste the old answer. Yep. Likes guns. Cool. Cool. Got that. And finally, your little personalized question here. Uh, how fireproof are you? And where do you see yourself in 10 years, if not on fire? Um, I'd say I'm pretty fireproof. And uh, in 10 years, probably still not on fire. And he slurps you back out of the room. As he gets slurped back into the room, she makes a run for it towards the door to try to escape. You pull on the door. It does not budge. Can I use flexible form to become goop and just go through the crack? Oh, it's sealed at the bottom, buddy. I try so hard. I just slur. I just... Ooh, man. Mm. Jane, can you come back in here? The door opens it really fast, and Jane struts in and like closes again. As he struts, uh, as it as it opens, uh, she immediately goes back into his normal blobby form. Please let me out. Now listen, Jane says, looking directly down at you. You will do this for me. No, <laughs> I don't know why I thought of the green M&M <laughs> copy pasta where she's looking down at this little blob. <laughs> you will go to GameStop and have the bastard behind the counter for a copy of Bambi on PS2. <laughs> she looks down at you and she smirks. Uh, now, now, a uh, potential new hire, G. Uh, you seem a little freaked out. Would you like some calming mist? I would like to go back to my home planet. As uh, as you say this, she turns her palm to you and uh, magic mist starts to come out of it towards you. Uh, I need you to roll wisdom save. That's a nine. As the mist hits you, it feels like a cool spring breeze, like waking up with a fresh cup of coffee on a summer morning. You are zen. You are calm. You are gn. You can almost hear the cool. distant, the distant thrill, the, the sounds of monks off in the distance almost singing to you. It is the ultimate calm as it de descends upon you. Oh. You got any more of that mess? I want to hear you guys out, actually. I, you might have some business opportunities for my future. Well, the firm isn't just about being mercenaries. We do offer a lot of jobs for everybody in the verse here. That's there are nice. tons and tons of ways to work for the firm. You could even go plant gathering with your team if you wanted to. Doesn't that sound nice? That does sound nice. It does. My ma would look amazing with all these flowers. All right. Back to you, Josh. All right. And then he grabs... Who haven't I done yet? Uh, just sketch or fish? Ooh, let's do fish. Grabs fish. <laughs> you... Uh, awaken and you are in the ocean. You're still wearing your suit of armor and your tank, uh, but there is just a, a, a great blue calm as you are in a liquid, a big body of liquid just floating around. Can I, I would like to test the water to see if it's water that I recognize. How would you test the... Uh, there's a certain How type are you of going water. to exclaim, ex explain to me <laughs> what fucking skill you're going to use. What skill are you going to use right now? No, no. You explain uh, to me. What are you testing you the water with? Investigate, investigate it. Investigate the water. The water. <laughs> Fuck. Corbin, it's water. <laughs> oh, my God. A 14. Corbin, it's is it water. Wet? And this water is so wet. It's like double the yeah! wetness of normal water. Holy shit. Actually, like double. It is. And oh. then you hear a beautiful sound in the deep blue. A... 
Yeah, and then from the distance, a whale with Zhaj implanted on the front of the whale comes up towards you. It's like a giant, it's like a, I, I want to say like your standard whale. I don't really know like types of whale, but it's just a big, just a big, sperm. but it's not like, not like ah. sheep. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, sperm, sperm whale. It's, uh, yeah, it's a big sperm whale. Absolutely. And he's like stuck, his crystal stuck right in the center of it. Very big towering over you. Zhaj! You ready for this interview process? I was born ready. All right. I think. Tell us your name. Well, my friends call me Fish. As in, hey look, Fish. And how did you hear about us? It's actually a really funny story. Uh, if I could remember it, I just woke up and I was in a white room. It was pretty nice. All right, all right, all right. And tell us why you decided to work with the firm. Oh, th that's a, that's another great question. You're really good at this, Josh. Um, let's see. There's, there's a lot of reasons. I've been traveling and I kind of just hop from crew to crew and... That's where I ended up. I gotta get to the next place. All right, and on a scale of 1 to 10, how desperate are you for work? 1 being desperate or 10 being desperate? Yes. I would say probably. Probably about, mm. you know, few. This is probably my favorite interview so far. All right, last one here. What do you bring to the table? Oh, I actually, I, I wrote this down. On, I, I got a, a lot of notes. I was, I'm always prepared for an interview. You never know. Um, let's see. The page is all uh, no, no, they're in my tank. They're, they're, they're waterproof sticky notes. Oh, it's waterproof sticky notes. Oh, okay, now you clarified it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, I, I work well in groups. I'm good at building and maintaining a water-based personal transportation system, and I work well in groups. All right. Got that all jotted down here? On, uh, let me ask you one more thing. What's your opinion on small creatures that may get aboard a spaceship and duplicate endlessly? Would you be able to kill them, or would you just let them live until they duplicate in the spaceship, until finally the spaceship explodes? It's, it's full of furry, furry, horrible nightmare creatures. W would you kill the creature so it wouldn't duplicate endlessly, or would you, would, you just, would you just let it happen? That's a good question. Am I in the spaceship? In this question, in this scenario, you would be on the spaceship, yes. Okay. And is it my spaceship? Uh, I mean, sure. Do you want to be the captain? You can be the captain. It's your oh. decision. Do you kill the creature or let it live? Now, I remind you, if you let it live, now the entire spaceship explodes uh, with, with a, in a giant furry fireball, uh, like fireball of fur. These motherfuckers are playing D&D and D&D. <laughs> well, um, hmm. Do they have names? Uh, sure they can have names. Uh, we'll call them... Riblets. Oh, you said Riblets? Riblets. I don't like that name. I'd kill him. Mm, good. All right. Good choice. All right. Get out of here. And the whale opens its mouth and sucks you in, and then you're shot back out into the room with everybody else. And then immediately as you're shot out, he just sweeps up and grabs. Ah! Did y'all see that whale? How come everybody's <laughs> interviews are shorter than mine? <laughs> Time dilation be like, I can get this, I'm a bug. All right, Sketch, you awaken. Uh, you are in a thatched hut, and there is a uh, Skithari cooking a meal in front of you. The Skithari is uh, unnamed. It, it does not speak, and it grabs the, the big pot of stew that it is stirring, and then it pours it out onto a plate in front of you. Uh, ah, inside sketch, of the no. Inside of the plate is a very big meatball, and it opens up and Josh's head is inside there. Hi! Ah, how possessed rock then possess meat. <laughs> what curse come upon you? Is it curse I cause? Sketch find mummified Nephilim once. It curse sketch. <laughs> Maybe this curse. Oh, this is going to be a fun one, I can tell. Hey, uh, buddy, it's me, your meal speaker to you. Uh, can you tell me your name? Sketch. Where is Sketch? Okay, and uh, how did you hear about us? Uh, voice told it. Told. Maybe in dream. Or maybe it was sign too long ago. I'm gone, brain slower when sketch regenerate limb. All right. Demon and room stop nutrition, stop nutrients. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And now tell me, uh, tell me why you decided to work with the firm. Ah, need find answer mystery. Sketch bring back the draw hive. No, we know. Sketch figure it out. Mysteries. They do not see like we do out here in wider world. Too high. Not no ceiling above you. It's sky. Too big. Too empty, but sketch bring back to whole, and we'll be happy there. Jesus fucking Christ. And on a scale of 1 to 10, how desperate are you for work right now? 
I don't even know if Mandy's talking or not. Seven! Oh my god. I like the enthusiasm. I like it. I like it. And what do you bring to the table? Uh, you have prepared stew. I have none. Uh, one arm. No, one arm gone. Come back soon. Five. Five working limbs. All right. And one last question for you. I think, honestly, I think somebody, I think an intern wrote this one as a joke. You don't know what that is. Don't worry about it. Uh, still got to ask you. Do you approve the use of roaches for interstellar travel? Roach, roach. Uh, how? Not no space work. Trick anyways. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's good. I'm just going to plorp you out. Wait. Oh, what's it? What? Before I go? Question. Question about roaches. Yes. Do, do, do roach have shell like tortoise? Uh, sometimes, yeah. Ah, so treasure inside roaches. Oh. Sketch have job <laughs> once. Take care of turtles and enclosure. But Sketch know they have treasures and shells. Sketch try to find turtles. Turtles hide them too well before Sketch dig into their shells. If Roach is the same, rich venture this could be for everyone. You're just gonna start ripping shit apart. I'm fucking scared, dude. I'm fucking horrified. <laughs> this, is not, this is not gonna end well for anyone. <laughs> All right, and he plorps gets back out, and then uh, everybody is back into the main room here. <sighs> all right, well, looks like you are all back in here, and we are done taking you into the pockets. Let me congratulate all of you. You've all passed the hiring process, and you are all new Woo! hires for the firm. Confetti rains down from the air. Balloons are coming. There's, like, music playing, like, da -da 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 -da. like, congratulations music playing. Uh, and like his hands get to roach. This is simply great. <laughs> I start shaking the hands of the people around me. <laughs> I shake your hand, but I look completely out of it. I hover my hand over my fucking my my, my revolver when you go to shake my hand. I'm gonna make a lot of new friends. Since this is a brand new uh, hiring process that we have here, did I not mention that? I should have mentioned that. Since this is a brand new hiring process here for a different kind of job than what we normally do. Uh, you're all going to take these little badges with you and a box, a, a pedestal rises from the ground and the top of it opens up with five little circular golden badges. They're cir <gasps> they're basically, they look like wow. the bottom of a bullet, essentially. Mm. Luxurious. Are they pins? They're pins, yeah. They just magnetically seal onto you. It doesn't matter whether what or not you're wearing armor. What do they say on them? They're just, they're just, they look like the bottom of a bullet. I put one immediately on to me and I go, I'm a police officer. Get on the ground! They're about quarter, well, they're about quarter sized. Um, could I also use my thermal sight to see if there's any like heat coming from the, the badge to see if it's like a tracking device or something like that? Or do you want me to roll insight or? I'll roll insight. Actually, no, 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 no. Roll technology because that's one of the new skills in, do in dark matter is for rolling for technology. <laughs> Three. Damn. Colt thinks it's just a standard communication badge, like a standard bounty badge. Uh, okay. How does it attach to me? It just does. It just seals onto you. It's just... Uh. Everybody got it on? Did everybody put it on? Yes. Kizak puts it on. I just kind of... She kind of grabs it and just shoves it in him. I am, have chewed at it, at it with my mandibles a bit, and then I just shove it on violently. My first thought was that it would need a strong force to apply it to myself. Oh yeah, it just slurps on. It just... Well, you have those on you. I'll have Jane take you to orientation and we'll have you go back through the recruiting hall here uh, and then to the orientation room to get you all started. If you have any questions, just remember, Zhaj is always watching here on the station. And then he... What if we're not on this station? Okay, the crystal bye. is gone. Bye, Josh. Jane comes back into the room. All right, uh, let's lead you all back into the recruiting hall, and uh, we'll go from there. Not to be, like, not to be weird or anything, but what was in that spray? Uh, it's a calming mist. Sometimes the recruitment process is a little rough on people. And uh, now that you've accepted the job, though, and uh, pretty much signed the contract verbally, uh, now that you work for us... Uh, it yeah. doesn't really matter because if you try to run away while on a job, uh, they'll come for you. Ooh. That's good. Good. What's, what is in that mist though? It's just a calming magic mist. I, I trained in, uh, corporate magic, uh, back in college. So it's just one of the techniques we have to get an edge on a competitor and it's, 
help me get here to my position today. Wait a minute. That sounds illegal. No, don't worry about it. Okay. Heading back into the break room as you go in, uh, all the adventurers are still milling around. Everybody's still just kind of moseying about. And she walks you to the exit door before turning around and pulling a remote out from her pocket. As Jane presses the remote, the sides of the room open up and the entire cabin starts to depressurize, sending all of the adventurers off into space, screaming. What? There are adventurers oh. screaming as them? they fall into the void, barely because the oxygen is quickly sucked out. You're all fine somehow, standing still there, but everybody is, and all the trash as well, is sucked out of the room immediately. What about the little robot? Do we get sucked out? You do not. She presses the button again, and the room Bye. closes back up, completely devoid of furnitures and adventurers. Now it's just a plain, sterile white room. Even the furniture is gone. Everything that wasn't nailed down is what's, what's the... gone. And Jane looks at you and says, I'm glad you accepted this job, and uh, glad you kept that little badge on you that uh, kept you from getting sucked out. So, so uh, Brendan, what was the name of the, the, the adventure that tapped me on the back earlier? That was a Patreon name. It was Jimothy Etherbaum. Oh. Yeah, from, was he uh, in the room? He was in the did room. Jimothy, he, uh, so Jimothy did Jom. sucked out. Jom also Jom was died? sucked out. Yeah. Why would you make no. Jom a character and then kill him in front of me? You <laughs> no, fuck? dude. I, I I knew it was coming. I thought it was gonna be a lot more gruesome. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> There's so much death already. Ah, we didn't even do anything yet. We didn't even cause anything. He only lasted one more mission. No, they go to meet their gods. Our sins weigh us down here. There are no gods here. Um, Brendan, can I go over and check the little hole the robot ca like came out of? <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> All right, tap on that. Is he still there? He pops out and he just thumbs up with his little second finger and then he pops back in. Right. <gasps> oh shit! Yeah. I a thing I for return. robots, this one. How long, do, for real though, how long does the Oh, the mist, the the funny mist, mist ends blast. when everybody gets sucked into space. You immediately, like, oh, you snap God. back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. Oh, there goes adventurers. God, oh, there go mercenaries. You the fucking words right out of my mouth. I fucking hate you. <laughs> I literally inhaled. Oh, God. What the hell's happening around here? I think it was their stop. How did she move the wall like that? Gods work in mysterious ways. And why do you talk like that? Ah, uh, you smell different hive heretic one maybe heathens oh you you're both the same but you have you have accents is that it so david's the Just racist one this <laughs> oh wow that was so fun <laughs> oh, right at the oh, one hour wait off wait off my back honestly damn <laughs> it not again what does creature speak at Ivis? Uh, accents uh different ways to say things it looked like meat that too Good enough to nurture young, but uh, only when dead, living to wriggling. I don't, I do not, well, I do not have me. It's because when I talk, it's my voice, and when he talks, it's his voice. That's why they're different. Not always my voice, though. Only most times. What? I'm more confused than I was before. You have a connection to your god sketch? God. God forbid me long ago. No god, sir. But sketch find them. Or... Sketch find way to get there. Hmm. Interesting. It's not. No. Oh. <laughs> Earlier you said uh, we could find rocks and the such. Can I, during our exploration or whatever you want us to do, can I keep those? You can keep any materials that you find uh, as long as they're within uh, the legal parameters of the planet that you're on. If you break a law sure. or, or steal or kill somebody uh, and the planet deems you guilty, that's out of our hands. We, we we assume no corporate liability for any death, injuries, or penalties or arrests uh, while you're working for us. And uh, maybe every once in a while you may meet uh, while you're out on a job if when we send you out on your first job here you may meet somebody who works or is affiliated with the firm and uh when you're on one of the planets that we uh work with you may be able to access the firm's corporate store depending on your level of uh what's the word uh compliance what what is the firm exactly what what are your operations like? We're a mercenary slash adventuring. I, in the old days, you would say adventuring guild, but we're so much more than that. We have our little grubby fingers dipped in so many 
uh, pots of honey. Uh, but a big thing that we do is provide work, uh, mercenary work. It could be uh, hired for a job but to protect like a, a shipping caravan. It could even be just assisting somebody with uh, their animal or creatures stuck inside of a, 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 a plant. Speaking of assisting. A cat stuck in a tree. That's what I was thinking. I see. Of. I mm. see. Mm -hmm. Would you have you ever dipped your toes in the entertainment industry? Specifically, I'm talking theme parks. Well, uh, we have helped work security for a couple of uh, verse wide entertainers. Have you heard of uh, Jibby Poots? Jibby the Jibby Poots? Yes. Yes, they, 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 the Jibby Poots. They make such amazing music. Uh, it's so, so sad that they were lost on Clown Planet. Oh, motherfucker. I, I knew it would. I knew you would talk about fucking clowns. I didn't know it would be episode one. Ah, Clown Planet. You, nah. Oh, but don't worry about Clown cl Acts travel is restricted to Clown Planet. Nobody goes there. Uh, it was just an unfortunate accident, and they were uh, they were lost and uh, not retrieved. So finally, sanity for once. I have a question. Yes. Have you heard of fish boots? No. That's right. You usually don't hear them. You just see bubbles. <laughs> That's nice. All right. Well, let's Nobody lead you left. to the <laughs> very crude. <laughs> Fuck off, die. Let's lead you. <laughs> Uh, as she leads you out the door into another chamber, uh, a banner unfurls, very sad and cheap looking. It says, you're hired on it with two thumbs up on the sides of it. And she leads you through uh, a white hallway, a white hallway, a white hallway, a white hallway. You're traveling for a little while, actually, until you come into another door. Uh, all right. Well, since you are all of the adventurers, mercenaries that we've decided to hire, uh, since you're all new hires... We're going to need you to go into the teamwork chamber. Uh, the teamwork chamber? God, I got to go through this again? Yes, you can see it in front of you here. There are uh, three. Well, these are calibrated a little differently than the ones that uh, you've gone through in the past, Colt. Uh, these are a little bit more special with the type of jobs that we may send you on. These, as, as she leads you in a room, it's a big uh, open space and there are three... Uh, basically, they kind of look like vats almost, or like uh, domes. There are three domes in the center of this vast room, three white domes, and there is a little picture on each of them that you can see. Uh, one of them, now you can see two domes in this room that I've put here, but imagine there are three domes. Uh, one of them uh, has a holographic cube rotating in front of it. Another one has your standard fantasy goblin uh, rotating in front of it on a little on a little hollow deck pedestal, and in the middle one, it's just it's like a nightmare. It's like a whirling whirlpool of red and black. Basically, you almost can feel as though you see a face in there. This is our teamwork chamber here at the firm. Sometimes we like to get groups, especially groups that may be working long term together, to kind of go into one of our many hollow decks here. Now, these hollow decks are powered by crystalline magic technology and. Anything that happens in the holodeck is almost as if it's real. A better way to say this is, if you die in the teamwork chamber, you die in the real. Question. Yes. Um, is this part of the interview? Are we still doing interviews? No, you've all been hired. You've all been accepted. This is just to get your toes a little wet before we send you to a planet. Uh, this may not be indicative of the type of work that you do for us, but this will help us calibrate what kind of jobs you can accept. This is all part of the greater hiring process, part of the greater whole. However, it's not part of the general interview process. You have already gone through that. You've been hired. Strange. Hmm. Lost. Last time they made us get hit by a bus first. Ah, uh, well. Excuse me? Yeah, what's a bus? Tell of the bus. <laughs> you know, I, well, that was board member John, and he is no longer with us. Uh, he, he did like to uh, just physically pummel people when they were in the teamwork chamber, and that is unfortunate. These are a little bit more fun. It's almost like for those of you who are uh, less technologically advanced, uh, this is kind of like going through a door into a magic world where things are different. So when you go into one of these doors, you'll go into a special door that takes you to a special place where you may fight creatures or uh, solve a mystery together as a team. It's Ex <gasps> Excuse me. Did you say fight? Did you say magic? There may or may not be combat involved in these teamwork scenarios. It all depends on how 
it goes. Would you like me to explain the three scenarios we have present for you? Uh, What's that one? And he's going to point towards the nightmare blob. Oh, well, that is uh, surprise me. I don't even know what's going to happen. Uh, one of our computer, one of our minor AIs is going to create a scenario for you as you go. And it may be horribly nightmarish or it may be fun. Why is the AI a minor? It looks like the inside of a maw. Um, um, uh, there are major AIs and minor AIs, not my uh, grow up. Pretty crude. <laughs> Damn. I, I think we should go with science always. Ah, towards the cube. Ah. Well, let me explain these scenarios. Uh, the cube there is your major uh, simple combat trainer. So if you go in there... I don't want to go do that. If you go in there, uh, the, the scenario that is present in that one is going to be uh, fighting cubes, punching cubes. Uh, y you may even have to talk to a cube. Maybe you'll have to return a cube to his cube boyfriend and then they can cube kiss together. It's just a lot of simple blocks in that one. And some people find that endearing. Uh, there are a lot of fans of the cubes actually here on base. I heard that... Uh, one of the janitors has been writing some naughty stories about the cubes personally, but I, I don't know much about that myself. Just that there are a lot of cube scenarios in the cube room. A cube have nothing to say with listening to. I understood most of that until janitor and writing. I, 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 I wouldn't mind talking to a cube. Well, our other scenario Let's hear is... about the last one. We, our, yes. our, our last scenario is uh, what I would call a simple fantasy adventure. Uh, the town of Weathering needs you to defeat some goblins that have infested their sewers. And it's pretty simple. A lot of people enjoy it. It harkens back to the old days of adventuring uh, before things started to get a little bit more complicated out here in the verse. And it's almost calming in the experiences that you can incur there. But uh, it is a little different difficult uh there is a there is a difficult little problem it's um it may be a little bit on the uh the fritz um what i mean by that is we've had technicians look at it uh a couple of times and uh i, I the last team that we sent in there uh, only one of them came out and he kept repeating a simple phrase uh so sad uh what was the phrase? Uh, well, he just kept muttering and repeating to himself, the horse, the horse, the horse, the horse, the uh. horse. Xi goes in front of everybody, slops his head together because they're, they're like, they're not, they won't make a slap, clapping noise because they're slime. Well, I for one think we should go cube. I like the cube. She said that there would be kissing. <gasps> a cube have nothing to say worth listening to. But she also said that there would be punching. How would you know that? You've never been in the cube. Cubes are shaped. Not worth no wisdom in cubes. Uh, we'll tolerate if Sketch can destroy cubes. There's a lot you can learn from cubes. Cube have nothing to teach. Where was cube when Sketch dig into earth? When was cube when Sketch take grub from soil? Rocks. Mm. Sometimes rocks can look like cubes. No! Excuse me. But, um... Sketch dig all life never see rock at cube. I've seen cube rocks. Yeah, heathen tribe for sure. Heathen hive. Uh, I think we should definitely stick together because that's what friends do. I that and the whole team will have to enter the same chamber. You'll. This is the first part of the teamwork test here in the teamwork chamber. Actually, is figuring out which path you'd like to take. Well, I would like to go cube. I think everybody should follow me. I slowly slither towards the cube. I'll follow. I do like the idea of the cubes. <sighs> Come on now, Sir Sketch. Sketch can bite. <laughs> Sketch can claw when arm comes back. Only pot claw now. But not now. <laughs> you should probably stick with us. I'm sure you'll be able to scratch the cubes. Uh, she said you could. Uh, agree for now. I think we should talk to the cubes first. Talking waste time. Come now, everybody. Touch the cube. Well, looks like you've selected cube. Go into the teamwork chamber and it'll start calibrating you. Uh, just be warned that all of our all of our exercises here are a little bit dangerous. They're a little bit scary. And some may say that they're even a little bit perilous. Oh, 
holy fucking shit, we finally did it. Subliminal space has been in the works for months and months and months, so long in fact that I still have my dead name in the episode. That's how long it took. And it's finally here. And it was all thanks to the generosity you guys showed when we did our funding stream and when you supported us on Patreon. Thank you so much. Here's a list of some of the top supporters that made this show possible. Alan Diver, Art of Ogin, Beck Davis, Bjur, Bland But Funny, Boo Pulu, Brain Soup, Caffeine Addicted Chemist, Chris Chapman, Christian Van Angen, Dasul Burt, Delling City, Dog Named Bear, Dreams of Ice, DX Studios, Eric Scott Gillies, Ethereal, Generic Phoenix, Handsome Destiny, Hater 115, John Requires Lasagna, Leo the Geotech, Loudon Woodworth, Mr. Shirt, Random Diamonds, Rhythms, Rocco the Raccoon, Smeet Mono, Spherical May, The Frost Ace, the Snacksalotl, Winnie Rab, and Will9455. Again, thank you so much for supporting us. This would not have been possible without you. 